My dear sisters and friends and collaborators of the Sevi family, permit me to wish you in advance a very happy feast of Saint Anne, the heavenly patroness of Saint Anne's family and all of us. May Saint Anne intercede for all of us. On this third day of the Novena in preparation to the feast, the theme selected for our reflection is the encyclical Fratelli Tutti on fraternity and social friendship and Saint Anne and her social life. In this talk, I intend to pursue the following methodology. First, I shall present the reason, purpose, approach and scope of this document. Then I shall proceed to focus on some of the key points that emerge from the eight chapters of the encyclical and I shall conclude this talk trying to imaginatively relate this document to the social life of Saint Anne. Fratelli Tutti, which means all brothers and sisters, is the third encyclical of Pope Francis, subtitle on fraternity and social friendship. The previous two encyclicals of Pope Francis were Lumen Fidei and Laudato Si. The encyclical Fratelli Tutti was signed on 3rd October 2020 on the occasion of, the, of Pope Francis's visit to the tomb of his namesake Francis of Assisi and it was published on 4th October, the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. The encyclical begins with a prayer to the Creator which in fact is a synthesis of the encyclical in the form of a prayer. I shall recite the prayer now. Lord Father of human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter and dialogue, justice and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have shown in each one of us and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects and shared dreams. Amen. The Holy Father has used many sources in writing this encyclical. In the first place, his own earlier teachings, the writings of the fathers and doctors of the church like Irenaeus, Augustine, Francis of Assisi, Aquinas, the previous Pope, church documents, the Abu Dhabi document and some insights from the film Pope Francis. Now the key question of the encyclical is the following. What are the great ideals but also the tangible ways to build a more just and fraternal world in our ordinary relationships, in social life, in politics, religion and institutions? Fratelli Tutti is divided into eight chapters, besides an introduction and, and a concluding prayer. In the introduction, Pope Francis makes mention of three factors that inspired him to write this encyclical. St. Francis of Assisi is mentioned as the first inspiration. The very title Fratelli Tutti is borrowed from the writings of Francis of Assisi. It is taken from the sixth of the 28 admonitions of St. Francis of Assisi, who used these words, Fratelli Tutti, to address his brothers and sisters and proposed to them a way of life marked by the flavor of the gospel. The Pope refers to the example of Francis of Assisi, who 800 years ago traveled to meet Al Malik al Kamil the Muslim Sultan of Palestine, Syria and Egypt with the aim of converting him to Christianity. It was a time of the Crusades when Christians were fighting to free the Holy Land from the Muslim occupation. To the great surprise of Francis Assisi, he received a great and benevolent hospitality in the palace of the Sultan. After this experience, St. Francis urged all forms of hostility to be avoided, that a humble and fraternal respect be shown to those who did not share his faith. The Pope sees in St. Francis the essence of a fraternal openness that allows us to acknowledge, appreciate and love each person regardless of where he or she was born or lives. 
Second inspiration in writing this encyclical is the February 2019 meeting of Pope Francis with Ahmad Al Taib, Grand Imam of Al Azhar in Abu Dhabi, during which they signed the document on human fraternity. The third inspiration is drawn from the extraordinary lives of leaders like Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi, Charles of Foucault. The main focus of this document is on contemporary social and economic problems and it proposes an ideal world of fraternity in which men and women of all nations, cultures and religions can be part of a larger human family, dream of a single human family. Pope Francis asks all of us faithful to respond with a renewed vision of fraternity and social friendship not only at the level of thinking, but in action. Francis reveals that COVID-19 pandemic unexpectedly erupted as he was writing this encyclical. He states that the way the COVID-19 pandemic was managed by the world countries has shown a failure in global cooperation. The global health emergency has helped to demonstrate that no one can free, uh, face life in isolation and that we are a single human family and brothers and sisters of all. The encyclical calls for more human fraternity and solidarity and it's a plea to reject wars. Pope Francis indicates that fraternity and social friendship are the ways to build a better world. In the presentation of this encyclical, Pope Francis uses four steps to present the message of the encyclical. These steps can be indicated by four words. First, assessment, second, scripture, third, conversion, and fourth, action. First, assessment. In the first part of the document, Pope makes an assessment of the problems and issues that come from the world today. Second, scripture, that is, the Pope challenges as to look at the present situation in the light of the Word of God and to interpret it in the light of the Word of God. What is the Word of God telling us today? Third, conversion. What sort of attitudinal changes and change of heart is demanded of us by the scripture in addressing today's challenges? And fourth, action. What are the concrete steps that can be taken in order to face the various challenges that the world faces today? Now, let me present to you the synthesis of the eight chapters of the document. Chapter 1 is titled, Dark Clouds Over a Closed World. In Articles 9 to 55, the document reflects on the many distortions and evils of the contemporary era. He sees a bleak scenario of the world such as the manipulation and deformation of concepts such as democracy, freedom, justice, the laws of the meaning of the social community and history, the selfishness and indifference towards the common good, the prevalence, prevalence of a market logic based on profit and culture of waste, unemployment, racism, poverty, the disparity of rights, and its aberrations such as modern types of slavery, trafficking, women being subjugated and then forced to abort, organ trafficking and so on. He emphasizes that global problems require global actions. Pope Francis sounds the alarm against a culture of building walls that favors the proliferation of organized crime fueled by fear and loneliness. Chapter 2, A Stranger on the Road. The second chapter, A Stranger on the Road, is dedicated to this figure of the Good Samaritan. Pope's response to all the above mentioned problems is the luminous example of the Good Samaritan. The Pope says, we are constantly tempted to ignore others, especially the weak. He emphasizes that an unhealthy society turns its back on those who are suffering. An unhealthy society is illiterate in caring for the most vulnerable. Pope exhorts that we are all called just like the Good Samaritan to become good neighbors uh, to our brothers and sisters, overcoming prejudices, cultural barriers, caste distinctions.
He points out that we are all co-responsible in creating a society that is able to lift up those who have fallen and are suffering. The Pope reminds us that love builds bridges and we were made for love. The Pope particularly exhorts Christians to recognize Christ in the face of every excluded person. The theme of chapter 3 is about envisaging and engendering an open world. He focuses again on the capacity to love according to the universal dimension and exhorts us to go outside the self in order to find a fuller existence in another. We will remain incomplete if we do not reach out to the other. He notes that the right to live with dignity cannot be denied to anyone and since rights have no borders, no one can remain excluded, regardless of where they are born. Pope calls us to consider an ethics of international relations because every country also belongs to foreigners and the goods of the territory cannot be denied to those who are in need and come from another place. Regarding owning land and private property, Pope Francis asserts that the natural right to provide property uh, to private property will be secondary to the principle of the universal destination of created goods. When we live, live in riches, we are robbing the poor their rights. The encyclical also places specific emphasis on the issue of foreign debt. He reminds the nations that while debt must be paid, it is hoped that it does not compromise the growth and subsistence of the poorest nations. Chapter 4 is entitled, An Open Heart to Embrace the World. And it is dedicated to the theme of migration. Reflecting on the lives of migrants and refugees, the Pope says, with their lives at stake, flee, fleeing from war, persecution, natural catastrophes, unscrupulous trafficking, ripped off from their own communities of origin, migrants are to be welcomed, protected, supported and integrated. Unnecessary migration needs to be avoided by creating concrete opportunities to live with dignity in the countries of origin. At the same time, respect the right to seek a better life elsewhere. Pope points to several indispensable steps, especially in response to those who are fleeing grave humanitarian crises, to increase and simplify the granting of visas, to open humanitarian corridors, to assure lodging, security and essential services, to offer opportunities to, for employment and training, to favor family reunification, to protect minors, to guarantee religious freedom. He speaks of the need of global governance and international collaboration for migration on behalf of the supportive development of all peoples. Chapter 5 speaks of the need of a better kind of politics. A better kind of politics represents one of the most valuable forms of charity because it is placed at the service of the common good. He recognizes the importance of discussion and dialogue in politics. He notes that there is a rising tendency in politics to close eyes to, the, to democratic principles, to exploit people for its own service and fermenting selfishness in order to increase its own popularity and wealth. According to Pope Francis, politics is one that protects work, an essential dimension of social life. It must be centered on human dignity. The task of politics is to find a solution to all that attacks fundamental human rights, such as social exclusion, the marketing of organs, tissues, weapons and drugs, sexual exploitation, slave labor, terrorism and organized crime and so on and so forth. The Pope makes an earnest appeal to definitively eliminate human trafficking, a source of shame for humanity and hunger which is criminal because food is an inalienable right. He also speaks of the need to have popular movements in society with greater coordination. In this way, the Pope states, it will be possible to go beyond a policy with the poor and of the poor. Regarding the reform of United Nations, Pope says that the task of the UN will be to give substance 
to the concept of a family of nations working for the common good, the eradication of poverty and the protection of human rights, the UN must promote the force of law rather than the law of force. Chapter 6 stresses on the need for dialogue and friendship in society. Here Pope discusses the concept of life as the art of encounter with everyone, even with the world's peripheries and with original peoples, because each of us can learn something from the other. No one is useless and no one can be ignored. The miracle of kindness is an attitude to be, to be recovered because it is a star shining in the midst of darkness and freezes from the cruelty, the anxiety, the frantic flurry of activity that prevail in the contemporary era. The Pope points to love as the necessary ground for our building a culture of encounter, which means that we as a people should be planning a project that includes everyone. Chapter 7 speaks about the possible paths of renewed encounter. He speaks of the importance of promoting peace. The Pope underlines that peace is connected to truth, justice and mercy. He observes that forgiveness is linked to peace. We must love everyone without exception. Loving an oppressor means helping him to change and not allowing him to continue oppressing his neighbor. Another important point that Pope raises is that forgiveness does not mean impunity, that is, letting the oppressor go scot-free, but rather justice and remembrance, because to forgive does not mean to forget, but to renounce the destructive power of evil and the desire for revenge. Pope says that we must never forget horrors like World War II, the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, persecutions and ethnic massacres, they must be remembered always anew so as not to be become anesthetized and to keep the flame of collective conscience alive. Concerning war, Pope notes that war is a constant threat. War represents the negation of all rights, a failure of politics and, humani and of humanity and a stinging defeat before the force of evil. Pope says that we must vehemently reaffirm never again war. In the 8th chapter of the encyclical, the Pope appeals to all religious believers, regardless of their tradition, to be agents of reconciliation, recognizing the fundamental commitment we all have to promote the common good. He emphasizes that terrorism is not due to religion, but to erroneous interpretations of religious texts as well as policies linked to hunger, poverty, injustice and oppression. He observes that a journey of peace among religion is possible through sincere dialogue and collaboration. In a very special manner, the Pope reminds all of us faithful regarding the role of the Church. He tells us that the Church does not restrict her mission to the private sphere. The Church does not renounce the political dimension of life itself, attention to the common good and concern for integral human development according to evangelical principles. Lastly, Francis turns to the, to the appeal that in the name of human fraternity, dialogue be accepted as a way common cooperation as conduct and mutual knowledge as method and standard. Before I conclude, I would like to synthesize the document in a dozen statements. They are, first, we are all children of God and brothers and sisters of one another. Two, dream of a one single human family. Three, be a loving neighbor, a good Samaritan to one another. Four, do not forget your history. Keep alive the memory and traditions, the values of family and society. 5. Have an open heart towards everyone. 6. Be opposed to all forms of violence, injustice, discrimination and the mentality of building walls, division and separation and enmity. 7. Say no to the culture of building walls and indifference. 8. Forgiveness is not same as forgetting but leading the offender to true conversion. 9. 
having a primacy for human dignity and the inalienable right of every person who is created in the image and likeness of God. 10. Be a person of dialogue and encounter. 11. Be inspired by great men and women who have contributed to the common good, fraternity and social friendship. 12. Be guided by the love of Christ. Know the tree by its fruits, as mother so daughter. By looking at the life and ministry of Jesus and evaluating the life of our Blessed Mother, we can imagine the kind of person St. Anne would have been. Ability to empathize with the sufferings of the needy and those in distress, compassion, concern for the family, the willingness to offer generous service and ability to suffer are some of the outstanding social qualities that our Blessed Mother possessed. Just like any daughter learned from the mother good life lessons, looking at Mother Mary we can say what sort of person Saint Anne would have been. My dear sisters, may Saint Anne intercede for all of us and I wish you a wonderful, a wonderful days on the Vena and a happy feast.